Tell me about the trip, <laughs> the humanitarian work and the refugees. Um, it's actually very funny how it happened. I was in Turkey uh, visiting a friend and got introduced to um, Prime Minister of Justice and Youth in Ankara. Abdurrahim, and was put in touch with an amazing group of people, a woman called Hilal, who worked with Bosphorus. Um, and I said, uh, I, I want to stay here, I want to do something. Mm. No one's really speaking about, from an American standpoint, and living in London, you really only hear the news, so that's all you're hearing is what's going on, people like you explaining it. But there's no one that's actually gone there, experienced it, gone to Antep, to the container camps, and and actually done something. So it's, mm. I think, for me, I've experienced a lot in life, and I think that I've come to a time of 30 years old, and, and, I, and I made a promise to myself that I want to put my life into giving back to other people. And people will make of that what they will, but it's not a one-off thing. It's something that I will continuously do. And what they're doing in Antep is incredible. What they've done in Turkey for the Syrian refugees is phenomenal. Mm. Um, but there has to be a sustainable network behind it so that the people can live out their lives in the future. We've actually heard what could be some very good news. We're not looking at peace yet in Syria, but we are looking at what could be a framework uh, for a military ceasefire going forward. Given the work that you've done and the people that you've spoken to, and I know you, you're right in saying people may be surprised by the work that you're doing. They may, they may to a certain extent, raise an eyebrow, but, but what's your response to what we're hearing today? Well... I'm not a politician, so I can't speak politically. That's not my place. Um, but there is something to be said about when you go to, you know, there's so much that Turkey's doing, funding and helping these refugees that no one else, I, I mean, in Athens, there are, there are children that are living in these, in these buildings that are abandoned and no one's doing anything. So it takes going to these places, raising awareness, no matter what people say, this is not about me. When, when you're with these people, and children and, and, and they have that moment of, of happiness and they see like a, a shed of light you're opening doors for other people and who else is gonna do it talk to me about some of the stories that you heard well the first family that I met with um, was this father had his two children he brought them in and to uh, Sutambeli in Turkey mm -hmm. and I met um, Fatima who brought me to Gazantep and then in Sutambeli I went and moved this family from a house he had his legs blown off the wife had left him for a man in Syria she saw him as useless because he had no legs. So he has two twin children and a son that's 17 working in a furniture shop. And he's allowed to live there, but he can't really do much. And these children have no mother. So the smallest stories help the most people. And the more people that are willing to do that, the more of an awareness we'll have, I think, in the future. Any plans to go back? Work yes. With more refugees? Go on, tell me. Of course, I'm going back. I would love to bring you with me, actually. The more, the better, to be honest, in this situation. No, I'm planning on going back to Antep probably second week of January, around then. Well, that will be 2017. We are approaching the end of 2016. Um, it's been a tumultuous year, uh, yeah. it seems, for all of us. Are you, are, are you uh, looking forward to the back end of it? Well, I've had a tumultuous years. <laughs> um, but everything happens for a reason. I wouldn't be sitting here with you today discussing mm. humanitarian work and what we can do to change the world in the future. Um, yeah, I mean, we've lost a lot of great icons mm. and wonderful people. And I think life is, is, is short, and we forget that. Mm. Including, of course, and you talk about those that have, uh, we've lost this year, including Carrie Fisher, her mother Debbie Reynolds, and your great friend George Michael. Uh, in uh, Just last week, uh, uh, let's just read the quote that... Um, that uh, from George Michael, you'll never find peace of mind until you listen to your heart. Tell me about your friendship uh, with George. What's your fondest memory of him? It was when I was engaged. <laughs> uh, Simon Le Bon is a very good friend of mine. And um, I also met Boy George through my friend Paul Starr, who unfortunately mm -hmm. passed away, who was a good friend of Elizabeth Taylor's. So they all kind of came into my life when I was in London more, and I had asked him to sing the song Amazing at my wedding. And then I asked Simon to sing another song from Duran Duran. And they both had said yes. And I went through, you know, a part of my life in LA where I was subjected to a lot of things. And I know, and George went through that as well. And, you know, Boy has gone through a lot. And, mm. and so I have, a, I, I relate to them in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, and you Even know, though you're much younger than them, of course. Yes, but my, you know, the people that I've always admired mm. are unfortunately leaving us, um, but with a lot of memories and beautiful ones. So these are people that have changed moments in time, who have, you know, opened doors for a lot of people when they didn't have them open for them.
and you know hard workers and it just goes to show that no matter what happens the stronger you are you know and the more you give back to other people and stand by who you are as a person which is like love peace equality um, is a beautiful thing you said and you admitted you've had a tumultuous year. We don't have to go through uh, it bit by bit in 2016. <laughs> it's, been <years. laughs> it's been years, you've said. Listen, you know, I think there's many people around the world who say that they can't wait to see the back end of 2016. I know uh, you've been living in London now for a few years and I know you've been enjoying it, but I also know you've been out here in the UAE for a bit. Are you going to make this home? Um, look, uh, the Middle East has been really wonderful to me throughout my whole life and I went through a lot with holding a Quran and in Turkey I discussed this and and it was a support system to me and a, a spiritual belief that I found uh, and a respect for culture with that being said um, I'm doing a lot of projects here uh, and I would love to you know I'm starting I'm interested in real estate I want to I opened my low hand club in Athens mm -hmm. and it, it showed that just because I own a club doesn't mean it's a negative thing it's a place for people to be happy and safe and I would love to do that in more places mm -hmm. and I'm talking about a lipstick line and charity and so yes, I'm here for a bit. You're stuck with me. <laughs> I'll be here. We, we well, let's hang out then. <laughs> if we're stuck with you, let's hang out. Lindsay Lord, it's Thank been you. an absolute pleasure. <laughs>